Welcome back viewers and subscribers of AVG News. My name is Mkolisi Ngube. I am back here to respond to a few questions from Zimbabweans who are trying to apply for mainstream South African permits or waivers. And the first question is related to uh, the application procedure. There are some who say that they cannot uh, aptly apply on their own and they need some kind of assistance with that. Uh, so they want to know where they can get that kind of assistance because they have tried uh, to follow the link that we posted, but they failed uh, because the, the, the system gets uh, lost somewhere along the way. It takes them back again to the first page or they just don't know what to do there. The second one is, is it uh, mandatory for somebody who wants to apply for any form of payment to first apply for a waiver? And is it mandatory for those who know that they don't qualify to go ahead and apply for the temporary residence visa? The fourth one is, uh, is an asylum seekers permit uh, the best option for those who believe that they do not qualify for any kind of permit provided for by the Immigration Act of South Africa? So these are the questions that I'm going to attempt to respond to. But before I go ahead, may I request you once again to subscribe to this channel, to like this video, and to share it so that those who may not be watching right now or who may not be subscribers of AVG News may, uh, at the end of the day, also get this kind of information. The first question, as I have said, relates to those that are failing to apply on their own and they want to know where they can get some form of assistance for them to apply for either a permit or a waiver. We have assisted some people. There are many who have sent their details to me so that I can apply for them. And I've applied and I've sent through uh, their documents. But because uh, of the pressure that I'm getting from other people, because there are people who are seeking information, there are others who seek application assistance, there are many others who are coming with different issues that they need us to cover. I cannot, therefore, uh, be able to assist all of you and it. I would not advise you to send through your stuff to me because it may take me some bit of time to respond to your uh, questions, to respond to your text messages or WhatsApp messages. And the time is fast running out for you to apply because we are left with less than nine months. And for those who are applying for waivers, it may take between four and seven months for you to get the outcome before you can even apply for any form of payment. So I would advise you to go to your nearest internet cafe where they were going to be, where they are again then going to assist you to make that kind of assist uh, of application. Uh, the website that you should look for is VFS Global South Africa ZEP. They just Google that. It will take them straight to the to the to, to the page. But for the benefit of time uh, after this video under the comment section, uh, under this video rather, uh, there is a section where we describe what this video is all about. I'm going to attach the link which you have to follow in order for you to apply and then you will take that to the internet cafe where they're going to assist you. I don't know how much they're going to charge you, if they're going to charge you anything, or maybe they're just going to charge you for the use of the internet cafe. But you need to have some form of information as you go there. You need, for those who are applying for a visa, you need to to take your passport there, uh, your ZEP permit details there. You need also to have your address and your phone number and email address. For those who are applying for a waiver, you need to have those details, that is your passport, your visa, ZEP, uh, your phone number, your passport, and your address, as well as the type of job that you are doing and the name of the company that you are working for, as well as where the headquarter is, because they'll need to fill in that kind of information.
And then for those who are applying for a waiver again, there is a section if you're going to be assisted by anybody else or by uh, somebody who runs an internet cafe, there is a section which says payment or maintenance, which requires uh, a receipt number, uh, a ticket number when it expires, or deposit made uh, in what uh, currency and how much was deposited in South African runs, something like that. Uh, where you get to that section, because it doesn't apply to you, you then need to ask that person who is assisting you to fill in dummy information, which is information that doesn't exist because this is meant for you to navigate past that page. If you don't fill in that page, you cannot proceed to the next page. So for you to be able to cross over to the next page, you need to fill in that kind of dummy information. I hope it is clear. The second question is, is it mandatory for somebody to apply for a waiver? I cannot say whether or not you can apply or you should apply, but this the decision rests with you. But what I can do is to explain to you what a waiver is and what it is all about. For example, you are working in a critical skills area without the necessary qualifications, but with the necessary knowledge of the job and the necessary experience on the job. And your company is ready or is willing to retain you in that kind of job or you already have uh, a contract with that particular company and they believe that letting you go is going to affect the company's operations as well as or the South African economy or they have failed to get somebody who is qualified who is a local to work in that particular field then you can apply for a waiver or the company can assist you to apply for a waiver by motivating why they believe that letting you go will affect the company and also stating that or giving proof that they have tried and failed to get any South African to work in that particular field. Or if you are working in a critical skills area, do we have some form of qualification in that area, but that qualification does not meet the critical skills category as uh, published by the Department of Home Affairs, again, you can apply for a waiver. Or if you have experience in a particular job, which may not even be in a critical skills category, but because of your experience in that particular field, you believe that uh, you are an addition to the South African economy or your company believes that they need you in that particular field even to train South Africans, then you can apply for a waiver. But it's all, not only this. Sitting there, maybe if you believe that applying for a waiver can, in a way, enhance your chances of then getting a general work visa or any form of visa, you can also apply for a waiver. How much does it cost for somebody to apply for a waiver? The amount is 1,550, which you pay, uh, I need to add this, whether you're applying for a waiver or you're applying for a work permit, there is some documents that are going to be printed. Uh, there is two of them. One has a checklist of what forms of documents you need to submit to VFS uh, on your appointment day. The other one, uh, the other form, has the bank uh, payment details where you need to go and pay before you can book an appointment. Then after booking the appointment, uh, after paying, uh, the money is going to reflect uh, on the system of the person that applied for you and then that is where you can book or they can book on your behalf an appointment date then after doing that there are some documents that can be printed again which you'll then need to take to the vfs global to submit whether you're applying for a waiver or a permit you need to submit those documents 
so the checklist is there again i hope this is very clear and uh i've explained this to you then on whether or not it's mandatory for somebody to apply for any form of permit even if they know they don't qualify again i cannot say uh, don't apply or do apply but what you can do is as we've been saying please write to the department of home affairs via the zep inquiries at dha dot gov dot za and com p2 info at adfsa dot org dot za but the advice that i would give you is if you decide to take action take that action now because the time is running out and the department of home affairs has indicated that after the 30th of june 2023 there will be no more extensions to the grace period given to zimbabwe exemption permit holders the other question is should those that know that they do not qualify for any form of visa then try and fall back on the asylum seeker permit it is not advisable unless you've got good cause why you cannot go to zimbabwe if you have ever been to zimbabwe during the duration of this period and then you apply based on what you claim uh, happened some years ago you will not qualify you can only qualify if there is you can you have proof that there is some form of persecution on your person as an individual and this form of persecution or this threat is real and you can therefore not travel back to zimbabwe i hope again that is very clear because you cannot qualify for an asylum seeker permit or refugee document based on the economic downturn in zimbabwe thank you very much please do not forget to subscribe to this channel like this video and share it